This is Boom Bust, broadcasting around the world from Washington, D.C. I'm Bart Chilton. Coming up, we'll take stock of equities. Get it? Sorry, probably too soon. We move fast around here. We'll take stock of equities and ask Melissa Armo of Stock Swoosh to do an analysis of some key companies and analyze their performance. Plus, Holland Cook of The Big Picture tells us why baby boomers might be the most money consequential generation out there. And we go to Miami for the North American Bit Bitcoin Conference and then talk to Jeffrey Tucker of the American Institute for Economic Research, who is there for the conference. But first, let's get to a couple of stories topping today's business and financial headlines. Net neutrality, the principle that internet providers like Comcast and others and local internet and television service providers must treat all data on the internet the same and not discriminate or levy divergent fees by user, content, website, platform, or the app used, that service providers must not discriminate, that principle was overturned by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, on a three to two party line vote in December. Well now, Democrat senators say they hold more than 50 senator votes in an attempt to challenge the repeal of net neutrality. That means they have picked up at least one, possibly a few Republican votes. This news represents a small glimmer of hope about the future fate of net neutrality and the fairness principle of access to well, knowledge. Without net neutrality, we have essentially created a closed and captive media caste system where knowledge is basically being outright rationed. According to a Pew Research study last year, those who live in rural areas are about twice as likely not to even use the internet as urban or suburban Americans, which have more choices for news and information and faster connection speeds. The debate about the debate will continue and we'll see if those more than 50 plus senators might get a vote to overturn the recent FCC net neutrality pullback. Uh, the news this morning is that IBM, International Business Machines, has reported higher revenue numbers for the first time in nearly two years and expects continued growth this year. On the other side of the spectrum, Amex, American Express, saw the first quarterly loss since, get this, 1992. Amex CEO Kenneth Chenault says, the hit was due, like other companies we've discussed in recent days on this program, uh, due to the tax bill that was re uh, passed at the end of last year. Well, other stocks are making major moves this year. Let's bring in a, the effervescent Melissa Armo of Stock Swoosh, who usually tells us about retail numbers, but she looks at stocks every day. So, Melissa, it's great to have you with us on this comment, uh, on this topic. You want to comment on the IBM and the Amex numbers? Well, good to see you, Bart. Good to see you. And Yes. Well, IBM is very interesting because the stock has not made brand new all-time highs since 2013. And here we are, we're in 2018. So to have an earnings miss like this as far as the stock's reaction, like you said, they had some good news in the report, but the reaction was negative because the night before the earnings, the stock was around 169, and then it gapped down in the morning in the pre-market around 164 and fell on the day. So I just think that investors didn't see what they wanted to see with IBM, and it's really been lagging, and it's had a hard time competing with the likes of Microsoft, which has been performing extremely well in this bullish market. And how about Apple stock? You know, they made that major announcement yesterday that they, they had a pullback and they were going to supposedly create all these, these jobs in, in, in the U.S., although some of those they were going to create anymore. Their stock is near an all-time high these days, isn't it? Yes, actually, Apple hit over 180, which is big news for the stock, really getting closer and closer to that 200 level, which is, I think, what investors are looking for. Apple has earnings out February 1st, so that's going to be a, that's the biggest, actually, earnings night of the season. Google, Amazon, and Apple all report February 1st after the bell, so that's going to be a big night, and investors are waiting for that. But I'll tell you, I, I, January 18th, Fortune came out and Apple was announced at the top of their list for the world's most admired companies. So Apple is still up there. And you mentioned about them creating these jobs. The big news, too, was that 
They're repatriating $250 billion of their overseas assets into the U.S. because of this new tax reform. And that is huge. Not only is it huge for Apple and the growth you're going to see in the U.S. with that money coming back, it's also huge because the government is going to get some of that money taxed, over $30 billion, and that's all going to go into the U.S. Treasury. Yeah. Now, in fairness, I mean, they're business. They're not philanthropists. Uh, they're they're do making this move because, you know, the corporate tax rate was 38 uh, percent. It went down to 21. But that repatriation right. fee is only 15.5 percent. So while they are going to pay all this money, as you say, Melissa, they're actually saving 50 billion buckaroos. So it's it's also a, a, a big money decision for them. Now, we, we talk about the tax, uh, but what about uh, Google and, and Alphabet, for example? Uh, how are they doing? doing they were killers last year they still going strong Google still stronger than ever again made new highs with the market in the last calendar year as many times almost as the market did but I will tell you the biggest strongest stock in the market is still the beast of Amazon it seems like that is headed right to 1500 if it has a good quarterly earnings but anybody knows it hit over 1300 went over 1325 I think there's huge expectations for that whole sector tech of this year of 2018 they had a big year in 2017 there's a lot of expectations out for that sector to continue the growth this year particularly with the savings again with tax reform all these corporations are going to benefit from that and Amazon just continues to expand and expand and expand and although you mentioned about Apple being a company for profit which of course they are they still did not have to bring all that money back to the US because they're going to be taxed on it which if they can keep it outside of the US they wouldn't be taxed on it so they still did not have to make a move like that it's probably my uh, you know inquisitive and doubting former regulator uh, mind at work Melissa I just I, I see all these companies and we need them and they provide the economic engine to our democracy uh, but when they make claims like we saw uh, you know with with Walmart that they're gonna raise prices and then they're gonna under their breath say and we're closing 60 Sam stores uh, I just get worried Apple was already gonna spend uh, I had read several weeks ago 16 billion dollars in the US in a single year so for them to say they're gonna spend 30 billion Billion over five years, um, you know, that doesn't really start my engine a whole lot. But they're a good company. They make a great product, yes. you know. Uh, and, and so finally, before we go, I want to get your take on GE. I mean, they're talking about a breakup. Uh, that would be incredible. What's your thoughts on that and on the GE stock? Well, it's like going from apples to oranges talking about Amazon and GE. Amazon is one of the strongest stocks in the market, and GE is one of the weakest well-known stocks in the market right now. And it's unfortunate. The last time we're talking about brand new all-time highs that GE saw brand new all-time highs was back in 2000. So 18 years ago, the stock broke $16. It does report January 24th, so that will be an important day for the stock. However, they haven't really performed in this bullish market and they would have to literally gap up to the $36 level. Stock broke 16, so it would be a tremendous feat for them to get back up in an uptrend. GE is in a downtrend, and to me, it's really not a buy till it hits up over 36 bucks a share right now. And I mean, that seems unlikely. Could it happen? Yes. Uh, but I think it would more likely, if it had even a good earnings, rally a little bit and then take its time moving back up. They had the new CEO came aboard in August of 2017, and you really got to give the guy a chance to see what he can do here. He hasn't even been the, at the helm for a year, so we'll see what he can do. I mean, he's going to try to turn the company around. Super. That is so fun to do a little round robin. We want to do that again. We love you on real t retail numbers, Thanks. but we love you on stocks. Melissa Armour, founder of Stock Swoosh. Thanks as always. Thanks for having me, Brian.